I just love the, the design of all the characters, this sort of Western steampunk post-apocalyptic nightmare. It's a little bit religious. It's weirdly British at times. I guess it never occurred to me that Mad Max could just take place in Australia. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, our movie in the middle is Furiosa. Furiosa is the prequel to Mad Max Fury Road, following the titular character's journey through the wasteland as she plots her escape home after being kidnapped by the psychotic warlord Dementus. It stars Anya Taylor-Joy, Chris Hemsworth, Tom Burke, and Lockie Hume. So if you guys saw my Mad Max Fury Road review, you already know how I feel about that movie and how much I freaking love it. If you haven't seen that, you can check it out right here. But let's get into the highs of this movie. First of all, it's just bonkers to me to think that when this movie came out, they announced that they were going to be doing Furiosa a little bit, maybe like a year or two after. And it was one of those movies that I was like, we're never actually going to get this because I've never been hearing anything about it. And then nine years later, this movie is actually out in 2024. Like, that's not a real year. But starting off with the highs, the cinematography, of course, in any of these movies is going to be incredible. Once again, just the visuals, the color of everything. There is some stuff here and there that I'll get to in a second that I wasn't a super huge fan of, but for the most part, this is a beautifully shot movie, of course, with all the action, with all of the stagnant shots. There's a lot that kind of, weirdly enough, was reminiscent of Dune Part 2, which we also just got this year, so we've been getting a lot of those. And just, you know, the, the, the camera work, everything was just very well done once again. Chris... Hemsworth is absolutely the best part of this movie. He is fun, he is hilarious, and he is Australian. On one side, this character is scary and crazy God! and just absolutely indulges in this Jesus-like figure, this savior who wears a huge white cloak and drives a chariot or whatever version of chariot this is now, and he just deems whatever title he is in the moment, whatever he feels like. And he just has all of this, this, these followers. But on the other side, when he actually gets into a position of real responsibility and, and, and being in a sort of system of having to run a government, he completely falls apart. He becomes pathetic. He's kind of like the opposite of a Morton Joe in that respect, because a Morton Joe is a lot less showy than Dementus is, but he can hold his power. I also really did like, of course, the expansion of the world in this one. There's not so much expansion in terms of places, which I'll talk about in a second, but things like new characters, new names, new forms of transportation, weapons, battle strategies, all these different types of things, because there's a couple action scenes in this where they've come up with new things that, you know, people use and, and how they fight, and it was very, very cool to see that. I say there's no real expansion in terms of places because in Mad Max Fury Road, we were just given an onslaught of things, people, places, all this stuff. And it was interesting because even though they don't really explain it, after a couple of viewings, you'd be like, all right, here's where everything is. I, I get it now. Furiosa basically is just, because it's the prequel, funny enough, kind of maps that out for you. So if you were to watch this movie first and then Mad Max, you'd be way less confused. The thing about that, though, is that they basically just took what we already knew and solidified it. You know, really, like, we would go to, a, a like, Gastown or the Bullet Farm or the Citadel, and they would have it, you know, like, in a title card underneath. And they very, very much emphasize that that's pretty much it. Like, yeah, there's other groups outside of this. There's other random people or random little bits of civilization maybe somewhere in the wasteland, but mostly it's just these three huge places. And while it was very cool to see them in way more depth, it does kind of suck to think that that's mostly it. There's not much else to explore. Maybe I'm wrong, because they are doing another Mad Max. After this, it's going to be a sequel to Fury Road, and maybe there's more to see that, you know, people just did, they didn't drive all the way out into the wasteland and, and risk killing themselves in order to see any of this stuff, but maybe we'll actually find it. Generally, this story is way more of an epic than a get-in, get-out action movie, and I really respected that there was a lot of things in this movie that they took their time with that they could have just glossed over or done very quickly, but they actually made it like a whole moment or a whole sequence. It gave it much more weight, but more than that, it actually brought me into the movie more because, you know, normally I'd just be like, all right, this is the scene where this would happen. And instead of it just happening, they made it like an entire series of events. And so it drew me in way more because it was way 
quieter and more methodic in spots than I ever expected it to be. And it was even split up into five sections, like a lot of these character-centered revenge stories are, because this really is just a revenge story, and I think that's pretty cool that they did this whole epic sort of feel to it, considering it is one of those big epic revenge stories, which a lot of old movies they kind of did that with all these like revenge stories. They made it this huge, big character driven thing. My big middle is actually Furiosa herself. On one hand, Anya Taylor-Joy never misses. She does an amazing job as she always does in this movie, especially portraying a, uh, a you know, a younger Furiosa and kind of building that character who is very quiet and, and once again, methodic about everything and meticulous about what she does, but also very angry and just goes for it. She does not take shit. And that was really, really well done. However, we saw all that in Fury Road. And it felt like while we did get a little bit more of her character, it, I don't know, it just felt like there wasn't really enough new stuff for me to care that much. I mean, obviously I still cared about her, but... It just, I don't know, it, it felt like I was more intrigued and interested in other things, particularly Chris Hemsworth's character or the world itself, rather than her. And there's actually a lot of parts where they kind of back off of her a little bit more than I would have liked. Also, I, I think it's kind of funny that, you know, Anya Taylor-Joy has a total of 30 lines of dialogue in this movie. And when I first heard that, I was like, how is that even possible? Okay, fine, I guess that she's just going to be quiet for a lot of it, which is true, but about... 45 minutes into this two hour and 28 minute movie, I was like, is she in this movie? Anya Taylor-Joy does not show up until like 45 to 50 minutes into this movie. I mean, they they seriously take their time with it, but she still did an amazing job. And obviously this is the titular character. So like, I really, really like diving into her backstory a little bit more. I just wish there was a little bit more nuance to her character and, you know, and, and we could get, I guess it's more into her mindset as a character, it's kind of hard to, to really dive, dive in there. A lot of the stuff that we got, that especially things that she does, are still very shocking and have a lot of weight. So with that being said, uh, my two lows for the movie, one is the CGI in some spots. In Mad Max Fury Road is very known for being visually stunning, incredible, very well done, all practical effects. And in this one, most, like, I, like 80 to 90% of the stuff in this movie is very, very well done. And the practical effects are there. The CGI for most of it is actually pretty good. However, there are some spots where it is glaring. Like, like there's a couple shots where they are in front of a green screen and it's never been more obvious. And there's like a part in the beginning where there's some weird dubbing when they're in this, sort of this cavern and it felt very like clear and there was no echoing or anything. I don't know. There was just some weird technical stuff that I was surprised was that regressed considering Mad Max Fury Road came out 10 years ago, and it's the same people working on it, I think. And also that we've had so much time in between for them to work on it. Also, as much as I liked that it was a little bit slower in spots, but we still got some action, I did feel overall the pacing was a little bit weird in spots for me. Some, some things were kind of back and forth. Some things were a lot slower than I thought they were going to be. Some things just wholly got skipped over. There's this part later on when they talk about, like, basically this war that's happening, and we had kind of been building up to this big moment that I was really excited for. And then suddenly it was like kind of a narration of like, and then for 40 days this happened. And I was like, whoa, what, what the hell? I was excited to see where that went. And so the pacing was just a little bit off here and there. And even the action scenes felt like weirdly slower versions of the action scenes in Mad Max Fury Road. And I kind of wanted more of those in here. The action was still really, really cool. It just felt a little bit slower in spots. So overall, I definitely do like Fury Road more than Furiosa, which I know all the boomers are gonna go, ah, nobody wants to sit down and watch a big three hour epic anymore. They just want guns and cars and fire. That's not the case necessarily. It's just, I do like Fury Road like a weird amount. So almost nothing could match the standard, but Furiosa definitely has its spot here. And I think that they did a very, very good job. It's one of those things that if you go in with the mindset that this is going to be a little bit different and you're going to get to see more of the world and it's not going to be exactly what you expect and it's not just going to be a, a regurgitation of Mad Max Fury Road, which is good. This is a really solid movie. It's really good. And I did like seeing the journey. I loved all the filmmaking technicalities of it and just how they pull you into this, this huge movie and this huge world once again. 
I really did like Furiosa, and I'm very excited to see what they do with this sequel that's going to be coming up. I'm going to give Furiosa a 3.5 out of 4. Well, guys, let me know what you thought of Furiosa. Where does it rank among all of the other Mad Max movies, and especially Fury Road? Um, also, did you know Mad Max, like the original, everybody thinks it's the Road Warrior, but it, there's like a Mad Max before that, and I don't even know if this is the one that I, I just learned this last night from a friend of mine. Like, I didn't, I didn't know that. And apparently the original is, re is like 70s cheesy bad. So I kind of want to see that, and I'm really hoping that's what I have here, because I thought I had just the Road Warrior. But I don't think I do. And as always, keep your hopes high, your stress low, and have a lovely day. I'll see you guys later.